Hi students, I'm Samit Singhal and I'm here to guide you through this beautiful chapter of thermodynamics. Before we begin with the chapter itself, let's just take a look at some of the genius minds in this field who have contributed to the development of thermodynamics, a very important science that has applications in our day-to-day -day life. When I say the word thermodynamics, this word itself can be divided in two parts. Thermo meaning energy and dynamics meaning some kind of a movement. So thermodynamics means movement of energy. But if you are looking for the textbook definition, then we can say that thermodynamics deals with different forms of energy, the quantitative relationship between them and the energy changes that occur in physical and chemical processes. Okay, so thermodynamics deals with different forms of energy, the quantitative relationship between them and the energy changes that occur in physical and chemical processes. One question which I am asked pretty often is that can we apply thermodynamics in our day to day life? In order to answer that, let me take you back to the childhood when we were young and we didn't like to drink milk but we had to. Now here we have this hot boiling pot of milk which we will have to drink. Now as it is we didn't like to drink milk we had to drink it on top of it this milk would be very hot. So what did our mothers do? They would take a vessel with some cold water in it they would put the milk inside and shake the vessel and by doing this the milk would lose its heat to the water and this water would no longer remain cold. By doing this we have transferred some of the energy of the milk to the water. Transfer of energy is a classical example of thermodynamics. So we can say that thermodynamics is everywhere around us. Another very common example can be seen in the food chain where the sun is shining out its energy into the universe every single second. A fraction, a very tiny fraction of this energy lands on the earth where the plants use sunlight and store its energy through the process of photosynthesis. And this energy is then transferred to the higher order consumers one after the other. So when we eat food, we are essentially doing some transfer of energy which again is an example of thermodynamics. So we can say that thermodynamics is everywhere around us. From the sun to our bellies, we are just transferring energy from one level to the other. In fact, Albert Einstein once said that thermodynamics is the only physical theory of universal content which I am convinced will never be overthrown. Which means that the great Albert Einstein was convinced that we live in a universe that obeys the laws of thermodynamics. In fact, a 2014 study concluded that life evolved on this planet as a consequence of the second law of thermodynamics. How awesome is that? Just think about it students, you and me and all the complex forms of sentient life, all these forms of life evolved from tiny little microorganisms but these microorganisms probably evolved as a consequence of the second law of thermodynamics which means that if we did not live that means that if our universe did not obey the laws of thermodynamics you and I probably would not exist. There is this concept of free will which is a hot topic of debate. In order to resolve this topic we can use the laws of thermodynamics. 
all types of transportation systems use the laws of thermodynamics. In fact, the one right next to me, this steam engine, is a classical example of that. Where we convert the steam and its pressure and its volume into work. We use it to move the locomotive. We have the concept of spontaneity in thermodynamics. You must have heard about this word, spontaneous. What do we mean by spontaneous? Remember students, spontaneous does not mean fast. Spontaneous means on its own, without giving any energy. For instance, this guy next to me is trying to push a boulder up a slope. But is this process spontaneous? Well, no, because the guy is applying pressure. Because this man is applying pressure, he's, up, he's doing some work. By giving energy, he is doing this process. So this process is not happening on its own. But if he were to leave this boulder, it would roll down automatically. That would be spontaneous. So when are some reactions spontaneous? If I take reactant A and reactant B, will they react or will they not react? What are the conditions in which they will react automatically? Right? So these questions can also be answered with the help of thermodynamics. In fact, how will our universe end? Remember students, I am not talking about our beautiful planet Earth. I am not talking about the solar system. I am not even talking about our galaxy, that is the Milky Way. I am talking about billions and billions of stars out there in the cosmos in this beautiful universe, how is this all going to end at some point of time? This can be answered with the help of thermodynamics. In the next part of this chapter, we will deal with some basic terminologies related to thermodynamics. Till then, stay tuned. And if you like our videos, do like, comment and share. Thank you.